Hi guys, I'm Srishti and I'm here with another topic for Finance Current Affair. So today we are going to discuss about the Corporate Social Responsibility and its recent amendments. If you like my video, then do subscribe to our channel and you will be getting regular updates. So starting with this document, let me first tell you that what all we are going to cover today. So we are going to see what is Corporate Social Responsibility, the CSR policy, its provisions, CSR committee and its role, one company example that is Nikon's, I have taken the example of Nikon and lastly the amendments to CSR policy which is very important for RBI and SEBI grade examinations. So do watch the video till end so that you could connect all these points. So starting with what is CSR? CSR is Corporate Social Responsibility. So let me break it down for you. Corporate is any business. Social means people and environment and responsibility as you know. The things you have to do. So what corporate social responsibility is? That a business is working in a society, it is working in an environment, it is taking everything from the environment, be it labor, be it the resources. So based on the lines giving back to the society, this concept, this provision of CSR has been introduced under the Companies Act 2013. So it is a self-regulating business model. How can we say it's self-regulating business model? Because if a company is doing well, it is investing in CSR activities and what are those activities? I will be discussing it in detail in a while. So for now, consider a company A and if it is investing in many of the CSR activities, it is ethically responsible, it is socially responsible, it takes care of the environment it is working in. So the investors who are concerned nowadays so before investing an investor is very much concerned about the company he or she is investing in he or she thinks that the company that she is investing in should be socially responsible so investors will get attracted to this company so it is basically a self-regulating business model that when a becomes socially responsible investors will get attracted and therefore the profits and growth prospects of this company will grow. So we can say that even if a company A does not wishes to invest in CSR activities but then also to attract investors to compete in the market it has to keep itself at par with its competitors so that is why A has to indulge in CSR activities. I hope that I have made myself clear and I have made this definition of CSR very clear to you. Now moving on, it is very interesting to note here that just by being successful and profit making company, a company is meeting its social responsibility. So if we see how, so a company takes capital from the investors as we have seen and a company then returns it, it in the form of interest or dividends. This is the first point. The second point here is that it also creates the employment opportunities it gives in income to its employees to its investors in the form of interest or dividends it pays taxes directly and indirectly so just by being profitable because this is the core business so just by doing its core business activities it is involving itself in csr activities so there is a list of csr activities as i've already told you and I will be discussing it in detail in a while. So nowadays to be more competitive and to be one step ahead of the competitors, companies are now indulging in CSR activities which is out of its core business activities as I have written here. Now earlier what happened was that CSR though it was mandatory for few companies, I will be discussing it in this topic but for now. CSR was mandatory but even though it is important to note that every year many companies give the reason that for not spending money on CSR activities as maybe they will give the reason that CSR committee was not yet formed or it is in the process of formation. 
so this was a loophole here so in earlier times before amendment when a company could easily avoid spending in csr activities then why did the companies do that companies such as itc you must have purchased classmate registers and itc on its back page on the back page of the classmate it is written that for every four registers you buy rupee 1 will be contributed to the social development initiative that supports among other projects primary education so why did the companies do that to bolster their brand to increase their goodwill in the eyes of the investors second is to ease the supply chains third is that as investors will come in their capital that they are going to get will increase and maybe at a lower cost of borrowing then we have as we have discussed it that differentiating themselves from the competitors to be one step ahead of the competitors so this was done now coming to the question that for whom the csr policy is applicable so any company whose net worth is 500 crores or more notice the word or here or turnover of 1000 crores or more or net profit of 5 crores or more during any financial year so if any of the three criteria are met by a company the csr policy is applicable to that company so it is not necessary that a company has to fulfill all the three criteria if any one of the criteria is also fulfilled that company is eligible for the csr policy if any of the three criteria is met then that company shall constitute a csr committee and we will be discussing csr committee and its role in a while so a csr committee has to be formed with effect from april 1 2014 now notice the word here that the company is used so what constitutes company it could be a company which is incorporated in india it could be its holding or any subsidiary company and the third one is really important so this has widened the ambit for the companies to come under the csr policy so the third one is that any foreign company having branch Perfect. offices in india now what a company need to do when csr is applicable so this csr is under section 135 of companies act 2013 now if a company meets the criteria which we have discussed above that was like of net worth turnover and net profit any of the three then a company is required to form a csr committee and that csr committee shall be comprised of a minimum three directors out of which at least one should be an independent director now in brief what is an independent director independent director is a person or a member of board of directors who doesn't have any pecuniary or strange relationships with the company or its key personnel then once csr committee is formed all such companies shall be required to set aside every financial year at least 2% of the average net profits of the company made during the three immediately preceding financial years so that this amount could be used for csr activities which are mentioned in schedule 7 of the companies act 2013 now by 2% of the average net profits of the company made during the three immediately preceding financial year means that if in year 2016 2017 2017 and 2018 let's take the example So if in 2016 50 rupees were made by a company in 2017 150 and maybe in 2018 it was 100 so the average net profits we have to calculate that is 300 by 300 and out of this 100 we have to take 2% of the net profits that is 2 rupees will be set aside for the csr activities I hope that you have understood this 
now further a company also has to furnish the details of the csr spent that on what activities is it actually spending csr and what amount it has kept aside as per the net profits it has earned during the three financial years also in case if a company is unable to spend 2% of the average net profits then reason should be disclosed by such a company now here we have discussed that if a company meets the criteria then csr policy will be applicable and then that company should constitute a csr committee consisting of minimum 3 members now we will see that what will be the role of this csr committee in such a company so the csr committee will formulate and recommend to the board of directors a csr policy which shall indicate the activities that a company will undertake it will also recommend it will also recommend the amount of expenditure that needed to be incurred on the activities referred to in the clause also after deciding after recommending the expenditure on such policies on such activities under the csr policy csr committee has the role to monitor that how well a company is allocating and how well a company is doing in regard to the csr activities undertaken now this is very interesting and this is very important as i have mentioned earlier that all the activities that could be undertaken in the csr policy is mentioned in schedule 7 so now we are going to discuss some of the activities which are there in schedule 7 but before that we will analyze that what are the spendings what are the activities that, that do not qualify for the csrs so firstly if a company incurs expenditure to benefit its employees or the company itself or its family then that activity will not be considered under the schedule 7 if a company organizes marathon award functions charitable contributions then also that is not included under this then we have if a company is incurring expenditures for fulfilling other acts like labor laws land acquisition act 2013 apprenticeship act then that also is not under the csr policy if any project or program is outside india then also it is not there note that all the csr activities on which a company could spend that should be within india so this csr policy which is under companies act under section 135 that relates to the activities which is within india so every company to qualify its spending it should incur the expenditure on the projects or programs within india also it is very interesting to note here that a government does not offer tax benefit to any csr activity undertaken by the corporate because government is not in favor of offering tax benefit because it will act just like giving subsidy but there is an exception that is if a company contributes to the prime minister national relief fund then that receives 100% tax benefit under section 80g of the income tax act now moving further what are the activities which are included in the csr activity right now we have discussed the spendings which are not qualified but now we are discussing the spendings which are included in csr activity so first is eradicating hunger poverty malnutrition promoting health care swachh bharat abhiyan clean ganga mission empowering women setting up homes hostels for women promoting education employment enhancing vocational skills livelihood enhancement projects or contributions of funds provided to technology incubators so if any form a company is spending 
in the activities which does social good economic development social development and it is socially or economically desirable by a society then that activity is included in schedule 7 so let us take an example you must have heard of nikon now this company has identified three areas under which it does its csr activities and it spends on those csr activities so these three areas are contributing to society through business activity responsibility to the environment issues and strengthening csr foundation so there are 11 activities in these three areas so i've already told you that just by being profitable and successful a company is contributing in csr activity so this is the first one that through its business activities nikon is contributing to society so it is improving its product or service quality it is challenging towards innovation then if we talk about the environmental issues which it is considering then it promotes low carbon society resource circulation promotion is there and it aims at healthy and environmentally safe society also for the strengthening csr foundation it is strengthening its supply chain management it respects human rights it promotes work efficiency effective governance so all these activities and these in these three areas are undertaken by nikon and this is the csr framework of nikon so i hope that up till now you are able to understand the csr policy because now we are moving on to the amendments so there are five key amendments here so first is so earlier what happened was that a company was setting aside 2% of the average net profits which it makes in the preceding 3 financial years now also it has to keep the same amount as its csr funds but if there are any unspent funds during a financial year in respect of ongoing csr project then that company has to transfer such unspent csr funds into a special account which is known as unspent corporate social responsibility account within a period of 30 days from the end of the financial year now there are funds in this unspent corporate social responsibility account so now a company can use this funds this account towards the csr projects within 3 financial years from the date of such transfer so if there are any unspent one then within 30 days to this unspent csr account now from the date of such transfer 3 years will start now within these 3 years a company can use the funds in this unspent csr funds account to any csr project so as soon as these 3 years elapses and a company is unable to spend these funds then that fund will be transferred to a fund which is specified in schedule 7 fund within 6 months from the date of such elapse now what does schedule 7 fund mean i have already discussed it with you the activities which come under the schedule 7 fund and i have also discussed about the prime minister national relief fund as an exemption because on this there is 100% tax exemption the government is not in favor of offering tax benefit because that will act as a subsidy to the companies now the second amendment is the penal liability for non compliance so if any company does not comply with any of the above criteria which i have mentioned the unspent fund account or using it within 3 years from the transfer to this fund or or at the date of elapse it has to transfer the fund to the schedule 7 fund so if any of these provisions are not met then 
penalty is attached to them so for a company the penalty will be not less than 50000 and which may extend to 2.5 million additionally if any officer so this is the penalty for officer so if any officer is involved and who is in default so imprisonment up to 3 years and a fine of not less than 50000 but which may extend to 5 lakhs now the third amendment is csr in case of new companies so repeating what i have already told you that 2% of average net profits made by the company during the preceding 3 financial years but what if a company is a startup and it has not completed 3 years from its incorporation so these amendments provide clarity on this point so for such a company the amount to be spent on csr fund will be 2% of the net profits made by the company in the previous financial year as against the average net profits made by the company in three immediate preceding financial years so this point is very important to note here then we have that under the amendment central government has been empowered to make rules and issue direction to ensure compliance also companies may soon have to geotag and also it may have to furnish the pictures of the projects undertaken under their csr programs to the government so if we summarize all the amendments here so the first one was about the transfer of unspent funds next we discussed about the penalties then we discussed about startup or a company which have not completed 3 years from its incorporation then next we have studied the central government powers and lastly geotag so moving on to the questions now i think that you will be able to answer the questions based on the understanding of this document so the first question is the nikon group has selected 11 csr priority issues in three areas particularly in the area of contributing to society through business activities responding to environmental issues and strengthening csr foundation so which are the activities which are not included in the ambit of schedule 7 of the companies act 2013 so as i have already told you that contribution to prime minister national relief fund is an exception and it is included in schedule 7 second is contribution made to the political parties so this is not included in the schedule 7 this is the answer next is contribution made to the technology incubators and lastly to strengthen the supply chain management so all these three are included in the ambit of schedule 7 of the companies act 2013 contributions made to the political parties also have the associated tax exemptions now question number 2 section 135 of the companies act 2013 it recommends to set aside 2% of the average net profits made by a company for the past 3 financial years for csr activities so suppose abc limited is a startup and it has not completed 3 years since its incorporation so what is the csr provision for such a company as per the recent amendments so the options are abc is exempt to spend on the csr activities mentioned in schedule 7 of the companies act 2013 b abc has to set aside 2% of the average net profits made by the company till present date abc has to set aside 2% of the net profits made by the company in the previous financial year and the last option says abc has to pay a fixed amount specified in section 135 of the companies act 2013 so as for the recent amendments as i have already told you while discussing the amendments a startup has to set aside 2% of the net profits made by it in the previous financial year so option number c is the correct answer 
ऑप्शन नंबर बी नीड सम डिस्कशन इट इज रिटन टिल प्रेजेंट डेट सो वॉट इफ अ कंपनी हैज नॉट कंप्लीटेड थ्री ईयर सिंस इट्स इनकॉर्पोरेशन बट इट इज इन इट्स सेकेंड ईयर सो टिल प्रेजेंट डेट मीन्स फ्रॉम इनकॉर्पोरेशन टू द प्रॉफिट ऑफ सेकेंड ईयर सो दिस इज नॉट द अमेंडमेंट टॉक्स अबाउट the amendment clearly states that 2% of the net profits in the previous financial year a startup or a company which has not completed 3 years since its incorporation has to set aside for csr activities so with this i have completed the amendments for the csr policy i hope you guys like my video and you have understood the concept of csr and its amendments do subscribe to our channel for further videos and regular updates thank you for watching it